Let's rise for the reading of God's word. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 16, 1 to 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church of St. Cray, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampelitus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stockies. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphena and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Greet Anacetacris, Philegion, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philegius, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. This is a reading from God's holy word. Please be seated. What a commendation, right? What a commending of the servants of Christ. This pretaste of what will be said by the Lord the day the servant of Jesus Christ dies. Last week, right, we talked about how God gifts the church. Every single one of us is gifted to serve Christ and to be united in one body. And as we looked at this and we, we, we studied it, we realized that the term last week we used was church. Remember that? We talked about church and we said, how do you view church? Do you view it as something you go to or do you view it biblically as we are the church? We, the body of Christ. And when you look at the function of, of a church converted by the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit, and you see this commendation by the Apostle Paul, you say to yourself, I want to see, I want to hear that too. Because there's one phrase, folks, in the scripture that many of us know, but do we know we will hear that phrase? Turn with me to Matthew. Matthew 25, I want to touch on this because this brings in last week's sermon about how each one of us is gifted, but we're gifted in order to serve Christ, and I want us to see that. In Matthew 25, beginning in the 14th verse, he says, for it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who received the five talents went at once, traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, 
the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. Now listen to the words the Lord Jesus says. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Also the one who received the two did the same thing and received the same commendation. But the one who received the one and hid it, the master, the Lord Jesus Christ says, tie him and bind him. He received something from the master, but didn't use it for his kingdom. And I want us to see how that ties in with this commendation from Romans chapter 16. Because this is a chapter where sometimes we tend to not look at because he's just greeting people. But one of the things about greeting people is these are real people. They're historical. They lived. They lived. And we, right here today in 2023, are the fruit of their labors. These are the very people that ignited this gospel outreach to Rome. This is the very people that got commended. They were told, greet, take care of, when they died. And the moment they died and their body was left wherever it died, and their spirit ascended to God, you know the words they heard? Which we will hear when he brings back both soul and body. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. How many of us want to hear those words? Well done. A term that as we follow the lead in the direction our master gives us, we see that this body of people committed themselves to the work of making Christ known. Let's take a look at Romans 16.1. Paul says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church of Sancreia. Now notice this verse, and I want to correct a a predominant error in in this particular um, point of Scripture, so that this way we understand. Sometimes we read Scripture, and this is the danger, with the cultural sunglasses on or eyeglasses on, and we read the environment of what we're grown in, into the text. You know, when she is called a servant, some have argued that she became part of an ordained group of deacons because the word servant is used for her. Now, the word servant is diakonos, means servant, deacon, patron. The word is used 29 times in the New Testament. Only three passages Deacons are clearly marked out by God. One in Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, where Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons. So they're qualified there. In 1 Timothy 3, 8 and 12, deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their households well. Now that word there, that's where they actually qualify the office of deacon. The office of deacon started in the book of Acts, where, God, where the Holy Spirit led Luke to say these. Now in the days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists, arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. He says, Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men. The word men there is on air. He doesn't use, so he's actually setting up the office of deacon. He says, set up seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we'll appoint to this task. Now, the word diakonos is also used in 1 Corinthians 3, 5. Now, I want you to see 
how the Holy Spirit used this word. He says, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Diakados, through whom you believed. Now, Apollos and Paul were not deacons. They were servants, as the Lord assigned to each. In Romans 15, 8, for I tell you that Christ became a diakonos. Christ was not a deacon. He was a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness. Mark 9, he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last, and of all, and a servant, a diakonos of all. So see, the word means servant, one who serves. Phoebe is not in the office but what he's doing is he's commending Phoebe. And look how he does it. He says in verse 2, welcome her. Welcome her united, he, the word in the Lord, welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints. Help her in whatever she may need from you. Now notice what he says, for she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Paul mentions to the Roman church to welcome her. Why? She's been a patron, a woman endowed with money, the ability to give. She probably was the one who delivered these very epistles to the various churches, the various household churches that were set up in Rome. She also shows by this allegiance to the saints and her work for Christ, she was converted. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 4.10, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as God's stewards of God's very grace. She took the gift that God gave her and she brought back many, many times more. Phoebe. We also remember Lydia. Remember Lydia? Used by God for the church of Philippi. When Jesus says this, and I want us to hear this, because you're going to see this as we go through this passage. In John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. Do you hear that? There's no separation. We're not the Church of America, designed by America, under the ideal of American principle that we're all independents. I come to church? No, 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 we're the church. See, and we can't say, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And then Jesus said, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Where is Christ sitting? At the right hand of the Father. Is it not where we all want to go? To be with? See, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be. And if anyone serves me, the Father of light, in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning, will honor you. Is there any greater dad? Think of this, folks. We're going to be honored by God the Father because we serve his Son. Why do we waste our life then for ourselves? Our life could end in an accident in a second. Will you hear those words, well done, faithful servant? You can't separate, well, I believed. Because we're called to follow him. He set the example, the shepherd of the sheep. As he set the example, we follow that lead and we imitate Paul as he imitated Christ. In verse 3 of Romans 16, he says, Greet Prisca and Aquila. Prisca, you know, when you think of the word Prisca, he, she's also called Priscilla. It's just a breakdown of the same name. It's like in, in, uh, amongst Italians, we have people named Anthony. But we call him Tony. They're the same person, you know, but it's just a breakdown of the name. He says, Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in who? In Christ Jesus. So again, greet, greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Now notice what he says. Who risked their necks for my life. They put their life on the line for their pastor, their preacher. 
the Apostle Paul. He says now, notice what he also says, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. In 1 Corinthians 16, 15, 20, just to show the unity of Christ's body in the New Testament, he says this in 1 Corinthians 16, 15, Now I urge you, brothers, you know that the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia. Notice what he's saying. They're the first converts. You know it. And that they devoted themselves to the servants of the saints. That's important. They gave to the saints because the saints are separated, set apart for a mission. He says this, be subject to such as these. Why? They're doing the Lord's will. And to every fellow worker in labor. He's not talking about the union hall. He's talking about those who serve Christ. To every, so be subject to every fellow worker in labor. He says, I rejoice at the coming, at the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaius because they have made up for your absence. They refreshed my spirit as well as yours. He said, give recognition to such people. Then he says this, the churches of Asia, the churches of Asia send you greetings. And then he mentions Aquila and Prisca. Together with the church in their house, they send you hearty greetings in the Lord. All the brothers send you greetings. So these people who put their life at risk continue to give thanks to other churches, to other servants of Jesus Christ. They didn't hide. You know, that's, and then in verse 5, when he says, uh, greet also the church in their house. See, at this time, as the church was spreading, they're in a pagan land. Anything different? Where are we today? We're in a pagan land. No matter how you look at it, it's a pagan land. Greet my beloved Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. So he pays this remarkable thing to Stephanus, but now he mentions Eponidas, who was the first convert to who? To Christ in Asia. He says, greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen. But also notice he says, my fellow prisoners. They weren't home. They were in jail. Why? Because they believed in Jesus Christ. They knew the adversary would be in their own home, in their own town, in their own city. But it didn't stop them. You see the boldness? You see the courageous character that makes up a saint? How different is it from today's modern day coming to a service? The only people we tend to serve is our own. And at that footprint of being our own servants lies the decay of our friends, our family, what are we doing? Why do we not have these ears to see we're disciples? We call claim Christian. We fill out an application for work. What are we going to put down? I'm a Christian. Well, Christian means follower of Christ. How are you following Christ? After he says, my fellow prisoners, he says, they are well known to the apostles and they were in Christ before me. In the early 30s, they were already in Christ. Gentiles, they heard the gospel message. They were in Christ before Paul. Romans 16, 8. Greet Apollos, my beloved, who? In the Lord. Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ. And my beloved Stockies, Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. 
Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet these people. Why? They're laboring in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. They're laboring for his kingdom to be extended. Listen to the greetings. Listen to the, the um, commendation he's given to them. And notice what he says about Apelles. He may not be on the top list of the memory of us. But Paul makes sure we know when he says he is approved in Christ, it carries the understanding that he also has suffered for Christ. And actually the word there, approved, and this is an interesting little tidbit, dokimos, accepted, approved, tried. What he's saying about Apelles is he's like a, a, a coin. And the coin is stamped in such a way, folks, that he's not a counterfeit. It's not a counterfeit coin. Dokimos. There's no counterfeit in the man Apelles. Could we be told that we are approved in Christ? Have we taken it on the chin? Have we? He says in 1611, Greet my kinsman, Herodian. Notice again, greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. 12, greet those workers again in the Lord. Tryphena and Tryphosa, greet the beloved Persis who has worked hard in the Lord in union with Christ. You want to talk about abiding in Christ? That's what he's talking about. They're united to Christ. They're serving him, making him known. They're not doing the soup kitchens. They're not putting in windows for somebody. They're not building canals down in Ethiopia so they get a, a, a slap on the back. They're putting their lives on the line for the sake of the one who put his life on the line for the person that God has ordained for him to die. So where are we at? Are we thinking about this as we take in this message? 16.13, greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. You know, who is this Rufus? Well, it's a pretty good idea that Rufus is mentioned in Mark 15.21. Um, when Jesus was carrying the cross, they compelled the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country. He is the father of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. There's a good possibility. That's the same Rufus. Romans 16, 14. Greet Asitricus, Philegion, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them, gathering in their home. 1615, greet Philegius, Julia, Nereus, his sister, and Olympia, and all the saints who are with them, gathered in their home. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. You know, when you look at this text and you see Nine, possibly ten women serving the church, not looking for a title, serving Christ, enabling all of the church to what? To get that message out. The urgency, I believe, we have lost. I believe we've lost the urgency. How is it that we became a selfish people? Think of it. What worked our minds and our hearts to only think of our own and not to think of what our meditation was from C.S. Lewis, those outside? Is it because maybe we doubt the validity of a place of eternal punishment? Could it be that? Well, far be it from people who in a Presbyterian system deny something in Scripture. But we have to really think about this and say, could this be said about us? Could it be said about us? Will this be said about us 
the day we leave this earth. Remember, he starts off with Phoebe, in the Lord, fellow workers in Christ Jesus, first convert to Christ, were in Christ before me, approved in Christ, in the Lord, worked hard in the Lord, chosen in the Lord. All the churches of Christ greet you. Is Christ your all in all? Have you tasted and seen how good the Lord has been to you? When you pass by someone, does it affect you? Everyone has a struggle today. Even though social media wants to show off the pearly white teeth with all smiles, deep down, there's sorrow. There's an emptiness. You know, people, you know, you think of social media, people fall apart if they don't get enough likes. Why is that? People see broken families. Look at us. Do we realize that? See, folks, what we're seeking to do at Pathway or Cornerstone or any other church in Vanguard is to waken our conscience up to realize that we are truly the salt of this earth. We're the light to this people. It's time to stop being selfish. It's time to listen to what Jesus Christ said and deny yourself. To take up the cross. Right? To take it up. To be willing to take it on the chin because God says you were called to suffer. If we do, we will hear beautiful words that we all want to hear, right? Well done, faithful servant. Like Jesus said, if anyone, what, serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. And those who serve me, my father will honor you. There is no greater person, no greater being that we could be honored by than our very creator, honoring his creation because of their allegiance and union with Christ Jesus. Amen. Let me pray over what we have read today. Gracious Father, we, we all fall short. We all seek to protect our own selves. Lord, we become the most pitiful at times and selfish. But we do know, Lord, when we confess the fact that we take your name but we give you not our feet. When we seek and pray to you for our needs, yet we don't give you our hearts. You call us when we hear your word to repentance, to turn around, to make that direction, to say, today I will follow you. Today I will make you known. Enable these words preserved to us in Romans 16 to penetrate our conscience and to inspire and to motivate us to be who we claim to be, your follower. Strengthen us, Lord. It's in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.